Thank you, Madam President. Uh, look, today is an important day. Um, this is the day that we're going to take up toxic exposure on the United States Senate. It is a day that, quite frankly, should have been two decades ago, three decades ago, five decades ago. Uh, but we are where we are. Uh, and the bill we're going to be considering is the Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson honoring our PACT Act. This bill is the most comprehensive toxic exposure package for veterans that Congress has ever considered and hopefully I can say has ever delivered. It has literally been years in the making. I'm especially proud of this bill because it addresses uh, decades of inaction and failure by our government to do the right thing by the men and women who have served this country in uniform and stood in harm's way. And I want to thank my friend and ranking member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, Jerry Moran, for being able to work together across the aisle to deliver what is truly a bipartisan bill that will give veterans of all eras the benefits that they have earned, but maybe even more importantly, the benefits that they deserve. As uh, chairman of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, there have been few issues as important as this one is to me. It has been a top priority of mine since I first came to Congress and started hearing from veterans, their families, their advocates, and veteran service organizations about exposures to chemical, physical, environmental hazards as they serve this country in the line of duty. So let's talk about military toxic exposures and why we're here today. In World War I, there was a thing called mustard gas. In World War II, we had radiation. In Vietnam, we had Agent Orange. Now we've got burn pits. Massive areas used to dispose of plastics, of rubber, jet fuel, and other chemicals in Iraq and Afghanistan and other locations around the globe. Generation after generation, war after war, service members have returned home only to face yet another battle here at home when sinking the care and the benefits that they've earned and that they desperately need. Because Washington, we, Congress, has been unwilling, simply unwilling to give the Department of Veteran Affairs the tools that they need to take care of our veterans. Our men in uniform answered the call of duty. They held up their end of the bargain. So we need to hold up ours. I will never forget what I heard from a Vietnam veteran in Montana my very first year on the VA committee. I was having a town hall meeting. This gentleman stood up in the back of the room of the town hall and he said, you are not going to treat this generation of veterans the way you treated us, the Vietnam veteran. I remember it because it hit home with me. I remember those Vietnam soldiers coming home. I remember the stories of toxic exposure to Agent Orange. I remember how we knew what we needed to do, but man, it took us a long time to get stuff done. In fact, we still are dealing with Agent Orange and it's dealt in this bill with hypertension. But here we are today, treating this generation of veterans just like we treated the Vietnam veterans and other generations of veterans that have served this country. As a result of turning a blind eye on the needs of their veterans, they have died. They have died. And they have died due to toxic exposure. So here are the facts. More than 3.5 million post-9-11 veterans may have been exposed to toxic substances overseas during their time in uniform. 75% of those men and women report being exposed to burn pits. And as a result of these exposures, many veterans suffered from rare, deadly cancers, respiratory conditions, and other illnesses. Let me say it again. Rare but deadly cancers and respiratory conditions and other illnesses, sometimes developing years after they served in the military. Now, it's easy for me to stand up here and talk about cancer. I don't have it, at least I don't think I've got it. 
Talk about respiratory conditions. I don't have to gasp for air. But the truth is, because of these men and women's service to this country in the Middle East and their exposures to toxins, they have developed these illnesses, or if, or if what happens in all the past ones, they will develop them in the future. And because of that, today, hundreds of thousands are going without care of the benefits they need to treat these conditions. And by the way, we're still not addressing Agent Orange for veterans suffering for health conditions like hypertension, where the science is clear. And in the worst cases, folks are paying with their lives. Veterans and heroes like Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, for whom this bill is named after, Heath deployed to Kosovo and Iraq with the Ohio National Guard and was exposed to burn pits, and he died. He died in 2020 from toxic exposure. Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, he was a son, he was a husband, and he was a father. In fact, we heard from his daughter this morning at a press conference that Senator Moran was at. Beautiful little girl that, in her words, said, I love my dad. But yet we didn't step up. The country failed to deliver for him. And we also failed to deliver for his family. The situation has happened with far, far, far too much regularity, and that's why we're here dealing with this bill. The Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson honoring our PACT Act will right the wrong for our past, for our present, and for our future veterans. And here's how it is done. This bill will expand eligibility for VA health care to move more than 3.5 million combat veterans exposed to burn pits since 9-11. By the way, when I was in Afghanistan and we were flying around with my good friend Jim Webb when he was in this body, we flew to the bases based on the smoke coming out of these burn pits. The toxic exposure was real, it happened, and it happened to 3.5 million combat veterans exposed since 9-11. It will support our post-9-11 and Vietnam era veterans by removing the burden of proof for 23 presumptive conditions caused by toxic exposure from cancers to lung disease. It will also establish a framework for establishment of future presumptions of service connecting relation to toxic exposure. So what does this mean? That means that we've had toxic exposures for over 100 years and maybe even before that, and it's taken an act of Congress to get these folks the benefits they need. Now we're giving the VA the mechanism to deal with toxic exposure. It will also give the VA the tools it needs to bolster its workforce, to establish more health care facilities, to improve claims processing, and to better meet the immediate and future needs of every veteran that our VA serves. The bottom line is this bill is far too important for this country and for those who fought to protect it. When it comes to fighting our men and women, when it comes to setting, sending our folks off to war, we never talk about money. We just do it because we think it's the right thing to do. They're coming back. This bill is going to cost $287.6 billion over 10 years, so it's a big ticket item. But the fact is, we sent them off to war. We told them we were going to take care of them when they came back home. There shouldn't be a debate about the money. I would agree that we should try to figure out ways to pay for as much stuff in this body as we can. But the truth is, Freedom is not free. There is a price to pay when we send our men and women in uniform to fight wars on our behalf. And you don't have to be a veteran or be exposed to Agent Orange or burn pits to understand that price. We have been waging war for far too long. And now, right now, veterans across this country are the ones paying for that cost of war. And we can't wait any longer. No more empty promises. 
we have a unique opportunity to make history with the passage of this comprehensive toxic exposure package that will recognize our veteran service and their sacrifice. We are too close to fail. It is time for this body to act. It is time we address the true cost of war. Our nations and our veterans' families are counting on it. I want to close with one thing. This is a big bill. I've been in this body long enough that if there's a big bill, you can always find a reason to vote against it, and you can always find a reason to vote for it. This is more important if we're going to take into account the future of our fighting men and women, the future of this all-volunteer military we have, the future of the people who have been hit by toxic exposure, the future of our Vietnam veterans with Agent Orange exposure. This is too important to find a reason to vote against it. This is doing right by our fighting men and women in this country. This is doing right by our military. This is doing right for freedom and democracy. Our nation's veterans deserve this and may be just as important. Our nation's fam veterans' families deserve passage of this bill. That I will yield the floor to the ranking member, Senator Moran.